Whether you're in the market for a new home or just want to sell the one you have, contact Shannon Franklin of REMAX Newport Elite for all your real estate needs. Shannon will deliver outstanding and honest service to get you what you're looking for at the right price. Shannon knows Kenosha and is excited to help you on your real estate journey. Call her at 262-960-5182 or click that link down in those show notes to learn more. Frank's Diner, 508 58th Street, has been a Kenosha icon since 1926. This classic establishment offers up sassy service with scrumptious breakfast and lunches. Try their signature garbage plate and check out and see what's on their specials for today. You mean Kevin? He's special. Yes, he is, and so is the food. Stop in at Frank's, open seven days a week in downtown Kenosha. Hungry? Well, we'll feed your appetite right here because on this episode of the Kate Talk Next podcast, we are serving you up a scrumptious show as we connect with the one and only Chef Mary Radigan. Cue that music. Well, Kenosha's number one podcast coming at you here, the Kate Talkin X podcast. Who calls it number one? I do. All right. All it's right. Number one in my heart and number one in my charts. Hey, speaking of hungry, mm-hmm. if you want some great pizza, stop on down at Luigi's Pizza Kitchen. That's where we're recording at right now. They're yep. located at 7531 39th Avenue. They're open Tuesdays through Sundays. They're closed on Mondays, so we can record here. That's so nice of them. That's right. Give them a call at 262 694 6565. Find their full menu and order online at luigispizzakenosha.com. And you know what Donnie always says? Order those pizza pies. That's right, Donnie. Special thanks to Dropping Daisies for that great theme song. Yeah, well, that's a rocker, huh? Huh, Mary? <laughs> yes. I know, right? Jeez. <laughs> Number one in the charts, I hear. Number one in our hearts. <laughs> <laughs> so well, what's brewing on tonight's episode here, Jason? Oh, we got a delicious beer here from Public Craft Brewery located on 58th Street in downtown Kenosha. I'm drinking a Amber Sunrise Amber Ale. Yummy. Yeah, it tastes great. Thank you, So get on down there to Public Craft. They're uh, open Tuesdays through Sundays, same Mm -hmm. as Luigi's. Yeah. So um, if there's something weird going on, they're all getting together. Yeah, I think they are. Maybe we should record there on Mondays. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. Huh. Well, this I, beer, if, I don't know if he gives a key to the place. Uh, I think we'll drink all right. the beer. But this beer tastes great. Yeah, yeah. So thanks for Matt down there for uh, sponsoring our, our our drinkage here. And also, if you guys don't drink uh, beer, they also offer wine and spirits now down yes, there. Yes, so they I do. So let people know that. Great food menu as well. Yeah, yeah. Go down there and check them the out. The Falafel Bowl Excellento. Mozzarella sticks, wonderful. Wonton, yes. the big, huge ones. Ooh, I know. Those are those They are were big. good. Yeah, they were yeah. good. I watched you shove those in your mouth. <laughs> shove them in with a fork. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was trying to be classy, man. <laughs> Speaking of food, I want to give just a little, uh, oh, a little sad news out here. Oh no! What happened? Um, what, 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 one of uh, the chefs, uh, Chef George at Union Park Tavern, has passed away. I got Aww. the news today, so I just want to give my condolences to everybody out there who who knew him and to his friends and family. R.I.P. George. Uh, we you, love did you. Did you know George? I did. George yeah. was a he was a great man. He yeah. was a, he was a good chef. What was the last thing George said to you? How's that veggie burger? Why aren't you eating meat yet? <laughs> I picked this one real good for you. <laughs> All right. Well, RIP, George. Yeah. You're missed. Well, we're here with Chef Mary Radigan from Tenuta's. How are you, Mary? I'm great. How thank- are you? I'm well. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank for you for having me. Yeah, you uh, come from a long line of well-known Kenoshans, and you are kind of established yourself here. It's a success story. So we think... Um, so I-, I can't wait to... Learn all about you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you might not regret that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mary, you're from the Radigan family, and they had Ray Radigan's restaurant, correct? Which was a Kenosha staple for a long, long time. And I was looking at some history, and some people might be curious about this about your grandpa Ray Radigan. Mm-hmm. And uh, it looks like he was like a like a, maybe a little bit of a bootlegger back in the day. Absolutely. <laughs> wow. He uh, got got busted <laughs> once, at least. Mm-hmm. And soon as the alcohol was repealed in 1933, like immediately he opened up uh, Ray's Tavern, which was down near 
the restaurant, but a little farther down, I think, for, closer to the Illinois border, I believe. Yeah, yes. About okay. half a mile or so. <clears throat> so he had that open in uh, 1933, and then in summer 1937, he opened Ray Radigan's Inn at the place where it's been for this long. This is kind of interesting because they opened in 1933, which was in the middle of the Depression and Prohibition. And my grandparents didn't have a lot of money when they opened it, so my grandma would sit upstairs and mm-hmm. watch. At that point, there wasn't traffic on Sheridan Road like there is now, so mm-hmm. you'd wait for car lights to go by, or if she'd see them, she'd turn on the lights. <laughs> yeah. And then when they would pass by, she'd turn them off because they didn't have a lot of money until if they really no started going. there's no one coming down the road, why bother having exactly. the lights on? Exactly. Yeah. So they really, they really skimmed and saved. But yes, he definitely got caught, I know, more than a few times bootlegging alcohol, for sure. Yeah. I read he got busted out at the Lagoon Tavern. It's one of my favorite places that you see on <laughs> Old Green Bay Road out there. Yes. Oh. Well, and a few people came in. My 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 grandpa um, pulled over your grandpa. <laughs> my grandpa <laughs> my grandpa pulled over your grandpa. My grandpa. I'm like, he got busted more than a few times for <laughs> sure. So, what was your relationship with like with your grandparents? Uh great. They were just great grandparents. They were. Well, he um, lived till uh, 1994. He died at 87. Nice yep, long life. When I was 17. So. Okay. Right. Um, and they were just like they were great people. Super, I think, very humble. My grandpa was just very. Uh, you know, I think men in general are are very logical and women are very emotional so he he had that side to him he's very logical like hey if it's better in the register than in the refrigerator you know it's okay if we run out of something stuff like that but you could tell he also um they they did very well for themselves in their lives but you know it wasn't an easy go in the beginning and i feel like they really worked hard to make what they what they had and that was pretty cool yeah i found an interesting fact about the supper club that I, I believe it was the interior probably was designed by coach architect uh, Joseph Lindy. Mm-hmm. I did not know that. He's also designed the courthouse, Eagles Club, uh, the IA Club, the Danish Brotherhood, and many churches in the area. Wow. Cool. So I, I'm assuming the inside, because it's an old farmhouse, wasn't it, originally? Yes, or it was. And so it was called the farm, the a restaurant called the farm. And then they also had like... If you saw some of the old decor, they had like a huge, huge mural, mural on the wall, which I'm sure he did part of. Oh, okay. It was okay. pretty cool. So. All right, cool. He must have been involved in that then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of neat. So he's a well-known Kenosha architect. There. That's cool. And then your dad took it over in 1971. Is that mm-hmm. Michael, About, Michael, yeah, Michael, right after he graduated from, uh, he, he uh, went to school at St. Michael's College, got a business degree, and then he got his master's at um, Michigan State, and then okay. he came home. Okay. And this place was a big name place in the day. It had I like mean, all kinds yeah. of stars were there. Yeah. And Carol Burnett, uh, Desi Arnaz, Bob Hope, Muhammad Jack, Ali. Muhammad Ali. Oh, yeah, wow. he came there. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They'd come there because they thought that it was kind of a secluded place where they would be able to not be bothered by everyone. So mm-hmm. they kind of, you know, they come in the Kenosha Airport, right? Is that what they did? I believe so, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. I thought I always thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Or they'd be cool. like filming, like Carol Burnett came up, I believe, from somewhere just outside Chicago when she was filming and things mm-hmm. like that. That's well. a long drive to get something to eat. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was that good of food, you know? <laughs> yeah. So what's your earliest memory of the supper club? I was probably like three or four years old, and I had on black plat and leather shoes, and I remember him cooking because one of the cooks was on vacation, and he put me on the cutting board, and I remember just sitting there and being like enamored with all of it. It's like <laughs> this guy's screaming, it's hot, and I've just got like my little dress on and patent leather shoes, and I just was like, I think that's like that I was hooked from then on that I was probably going to be a chef, I think. For four Halloweens, I dressed as a chef, you know, like I was a psycho kid like that. I was just like always knew what I wanted to be, and I think from there on out, like I loved that that sweat and that that you know it's blood sweat and tears in the kitchen it's Mm -hmm. it is what it is and you know you're either in love with it or you're not and you know I loved it from a very early age and I remember that I remember just sitting there and just being in awe at like three years old (laughs) I was just thought it was cool my sister was pretty much like you know this sucks (laughs) that's why she's a doctor now (laughs) she went in the opposite direction (laughs) yes uh, you know craziness in in another field so, Mary, okay, we talked about the business here a little bit. Let's talk about you. Mm-hmm. So, what neighborhood did you grow up in here in Kenosha? Uh, I grew up just actually due west of Ray Radigan's, so Pleasant Prairie-ish area. Okay. Kind of, you know, I guess a little bit out in the country. All right, okay. So, a little, little boonies a little bit? Yeah, a little All boonies, right. yeah. So, you're a trepper kid then? I grew up in that area. You did? Well. 120th Street. Uh, I was 100 and. 100 Street, actually. Yeah, okay. Not that far Pleasant at all. Prairie yeah, yeah. 4518. So, as you're a kid out there... What'd you guys do for fun? You know, road bikes, played basketball. Yeah. I mean, we were like, I see how kids grew up now, and I'm like, 
kind of feel bad for him. I'm like, yes, I, I, you know, we we played. Yeah, <laughs> I had a lot of skin knees, and you, you know, kind of had to generate your own fun. There wasn't really anywhere to go. No, really. no, you and know, it was fields like, and stuff, and, and you went for and stuff, you know, and... climb trees, and you went for hours yeah. and hours. Yeah. So you're a trapper kid. Oh, I'm a trapper kid. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yep. I think I said something else. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "What's a trapper kid?" <laughs> I got a trapper kid Laf- over there. La- Lafayette. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of student were you, at trapper? Uh, I was a pretty good student. Um, I didn't was not in love with school. I mean, I did okay, and then I went to college. But I just was, you know, I was more worried about playing sports and. You were kind of a big soccer star back in the day. Huh? Mm-hmm. I really love. I, I was captain of the soccer team, mm-hmm. and I made varsity as a freshman. I just really like. I love soccer, and then I went on to play in college too. Oh, cool! Cool. Mm-hmm. What What made you fall in love with soccer? Um, I was little on my team. I couldn't get on a. They didn't have a seven year old team when I was like seven, mm-hmm. so I was on a twelve year old team, and I thought I was sucked <laughs> until <laughs> until I realized that I was just littler than everyone else, and then I was like, oh, cool, I'm 11 now, and I can actually compete with these people, so then it made it fun, yeah. but um, I always have been a very like competitive, kind of a driven person, mm-hmm. and so soccer kind of fueled that for me. Like That's that's kind of almost like being a chef, right? You're competing yeah. for for people to like your dishes with other restaurants. Well, especially too when you, you know when I I worked at some of the I worked at six or seven of the fifty best restaurants in the world, and at that level you are working with a all males and number two, you have to be better than the person next to you or you're never going to get you know anywhere and no one's going to take you serious as a female either, especially if you cry or you do this or that. So you got to get tough skin and you really got to like you got to be better. Than the guys, if you really want to be taken seriously, so that really drove my, you know, that I already had that competitive dr- drive inside me, so yeah. that just really helped me progress in my career. So let's go back to soccer for a second mm-hmm. here. Did you want to be a professional soccer player? Was no. that like also a dream or no? No. Just, <laughs> well, where, because I just knew the, I wasn't good enough. Yeah, where's the job in that? Where, yeah. <laughs> I was never good enough. I was never going to be Mia Hamm, and I kind of knew that. But I just I I before I loved to cook. I loved playing soccer. I just really loved it. I still do. I still love playing it. I love to teach kids. Oh, you teach kids now? Huh? Uh, I don't. So I, I've done it a few times, of, of, but I, I don't get to do it as often as I'd like mm. based on my what I do for a living. Yeah, so yeah. It makes it hard. So what was your first job other than at the restaurant? Uh, my first job outside the restaurant? Uh, I, <laughs> well... You know what? My first job was outside the restaurant. I was, I sold lumber. I, I went to college out in Seattle in Tacoma, Washington, actually at the University of Puget Sound. And I worked for a lumber company and I sold, literally, I sold people lumber. Oh, and that, okay. <laughs> really? yeah. And it was a big business and that really sucked because it was it, it male dominated. Thank God I had that job because it really like toughened my skin. Cause you know, how many people I sold the wrong shit to? <laughs> like, I'm like, what does green treated mean? <laughs> I would always get selling the wrong stuff and the guy would go, I, that's not what he paid for. The, the receipts didn't match up once they went to go pick it up in the yard. Oh, I'm boy. like, so I, I got yelled at a lot in the beginning, but we, we, okay. we got our bearings after a while. So before that, you was just at the restaurant? Always at the like restaurant. When you were a teenager and stuff? Always at the okay, restaurant, right. yeah. Cool, cool. Did you ride your bike there? Was no. It? No? Did not. Because it, it was always at night. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And those small country roads, highways, you're going yeah. to you're gonna end up in a ditch or something. So, Mary, you're a tremper kid. Uh, did you go to prom? I did. Yeah? What was that like? Uh, I was on prom court. Oh. <laughs> I was really involved in high school. Uh, prom was pretty cool, I guess, but I think it was like maybe the third time I was ever drunk in my <laughs> oh, huh. yeah like i didn't really i wasn't like one of those kids because i was so involved in everything that i didn't really like party a lot in high school but we had a few drinks did I you guys go that. to dinner beforehand yeah where'd and you then, go oh pieces of eight what's that bartolotta's i mean is, do you know our harbor house now in milwaukee oh no That's you went to milwaukee for dinner? yeah whoa fancy. i mean we were cool <laughs> we oh, thought wow. we were we thought we were in Just our lim- limo off yeah of course oh, we did wow we wow. thought we were cool we we could always do stuff but we always had to pay for half of it so you want to go to soccer camp in the summertime you pay for half you okay. do this you pay for half and just like the people who would drive two towns over to go eat at ray raggins she drove two towns over to have right? prom oh, I dinner. guess so, yeah. yeah. I didn't even drive. <laughs> well, I'm sure Carol Burnett didn't either. <laughs> you're, you know what? You're right. I bet she didn't. So how did prom go? Who'd you go? Who'd you bring? Uh, Derek Knorr, who was my high school boyfriend for two years. Oh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A little shout out to him. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah <no. laughs> 
I guess so. <laughs> so when you graduated high school, what did you want to be when you grew up? Wait, what? What did you want to be when you grew up? A chef. Yeah. Oh, well, that's not true. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And I feel like I just went to college because I didn't want to tell my parents I didn't want to go to college. Or that was an acceptable answer in my house. Mm-hmm. So I went to college. And I wish I would have taken that money and traveled the world. Because <laughs> I could have gotten a lot, a lot farther in, in Europe and Asia for like that amount of money that I yeah, had. Yeah. Um, and probably learned more in my field. But I'm glad I have a business degree now. And I... I, I got to take some cool classes because it was a humanities college. So I got to take like Asian studies. Uh, I got, I was really close to an African American studies minor because oh. <laughs> I was like, Oh, I like these classes. This yeah. is cool. I went to, I went to Africa and studied abroad my junior year. So that was cool. Like I lived in Namibia for six months. I did, oh. I got to do some cool stuff. That's awesome. And so I feel like, well, if that's the worst thing. So the, this right. is the culinary institute, or did you go to a different college first? And I, kinda... I went to a different college first. Okay, which and one did you go to first? Then. I went to the University of Puget Sound in Tacoma, Washington. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Washington, yeah. 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 And then I went to... That was I... a lumber company there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and people being pissed. I sold them, <laughs> sold them the wrong shit. <laughs> did you just want to get out of town? Yeah, I wanted to go far as far away as I could. <laughs> I and how, like, long, how long were you out there? I'm out, I'm out of here. Four years. Four years, all right. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you got your bachelor's then? Mm-hmm. And then you went to came to Chicago, and then I or came what? back home. Okay, and realized okay now I'm gonna go get a real job. And I worked for a software company for about, and I made a lot of money. Like my first, I was like, wow, I'm making a lot of money <laughs> my first year out. And I was like, I traveled around the country and I trained people like on our software. Is that when you, did you live here in Kenosha? Those no, I base? lived in I lived in Chicago. Okay, and I'm, right. was I didn't feel fulfilled. Okay, and then I. <laughs> was All like, that money didn't make you happy? No. And then so I t- told, I, I said, I, I want to go to culinary school. And my mom's like, are you out of your mind? Do you not see what your dad deals with every single day? And I was like, I still want to do it. And then I remember making $12,000 my first year. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I had enough to buy six beers. Ra- I ate ramen every single night. And that, that's what I did for probably two or three years. Oh, after you graduated from culinary school? When I was, like, before I went to culinary school. Oh, okay. And I was trying to become a cook. Oh. So I wanted to make sure I really wanted to do it. Because all these people think, oh, I'm going to be a chef. It's going to be so cool. And it's like, <laughs> it's going to be so sucky. And you have to realize what the hell you're going to do, what you're really getting into. Because you're not going to be on TV tomorrow. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think, you know, and you, when you go to the Culinary Institute of America, you, you go to school with a lot of rich kids. And they think that it's going to be like this glamorized thing. And it's like, man, you got to put in the work or you're not going to get it. You're not going to be, you're not going to get it. Okay. You're not going to do it. So that's like a top notch school. Then I don't know. Anything yeah. The school. culinary institute okay. of America's t- top two and probably Johnson and Wales is another one. Um, and like, I loved every minute of it. I loved it. I loved going to class. I like, it was so different than college for me. I loved every minute of it. I'd yeah. go to do all this extra stuff and, I just thought it was cool. I just love learning about food. What was the weirdest class they had there? Do you remember? Uh, well, or anything they, you, they did. They did a, a wines and spirits class, and oh. you took that class for six weeks. And it was hard. I mean, you talk about a hard class. <laughs> I was hard because two, you had to remember all. The, you've been drinking for six hours. You had to remember <laughs> oh all this stuff. So the first class, everyone got drunk. It's the only place where people can get can drink. Be, below the age of 21 legally in the United States. Wow. So oh. you take this class and it's like people are, this is some of the time these people are getting drunk for the first time, right? <laughs> yeah, so yeah. can you imagine like... For educational purposes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and if people are getting wild in this class a little bit by the end, you know? I bet. Yeah. But uh, you took that class and it was so intense, but it was so like, it was so cool, but you like for me, I got drunk like the first class and I was like, okay, I can't, I can't keep doing this. You know, like... Was it like a... Uh, Five day a week kind of class, or one, oh, one day yeah. a week. Oh yeah, so it was five. It was five days a week, and it was six hours long. Oh, That's no. how intense it was. It was just like, and we didn't have a lot of that. We had cooking classes where that were six or seven or eight hours, but you didn't sit in a desk for usually for six hours. Wow. Yeah, yeah. You, you sat did. there and you were learning from like some of the best people that knew like. It's, it was insane. It was cool. Wow. Like the night before, you're like, I better pound these beers and shots down so I have tolerance for, for <laughs> class tomorrow. A little bit. <laughs> no, after the, after the first class, everyone started spitting because it was like, you're not going to do well in this class. Uh. Yeah. So you graduate from Chicago, Culinary Institute? Uh, New York, yeah. Wait, oh, you went, wait, what? The Culinary Institute of America is in New York. Sorry. Oh. Oh, so you went for your first four years? Wait, so you went I, out to Washington? Yeah. 
And then I came back to Chicago, worked for like a year, and then and I went then out you there. Moved to New York years, and yeah. went to the school. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. Sorry, I don't. I don't think City. I explained that properly. I I thought it was. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I missed that. Part I went. I went around. Okay. All right. I like to do that sometimes. What was it like? Your was that the first time going to New York? Yeah. What was that like? Just, just. Um, I'm here in New York now. Well, I, the school's upstate, but then you kind of like. If you're really serious about what you want to do, you got to get like you got to get an externship, and then so, two, you got to work for free around, right? Yeah. Because you got to get some experience. So I remember going to my first stage. That's what you call it. It's a you know a, you go and work for free and see if they want to hire you. And I did. What do you call it? What's that? Stage? A stage. Stage. Yeah. So you go and do that, and like you're. You spell it stage. Yeah, you sure <laughs> do. Okay. You're yeah. good. <laughs> and you're literally, I mean, it's, you're you're your pants because it's <laughs> it's scary like right so you go into this and you know you this works well in my whole life fake it till you make it you know, <laughs> oh, yeah <laughs> you've ever had to do that before and that's, that's the k-town like, tech <laughs> model yeah, that's what we're doing right now <laughs> thank god uh, <laughs> so you know i did a lot of that and uh uh you're coming in and you got all these like super like this is like the echelon of like cooks and like you burn a bridge in one of them you're not going to get hired at another one because that it's such a small small circle of of these cooks and these chefs that all a all know each other and b you got to be able to hang or you're going to get the thing that you can't hang and then no one's going to hire you you never want to get back blackballed in that so it was just like i and when i first started i sucked i (laughs) i used to set an alarm on my station i would write out my whole prep list how long everything should take me and i would be behind every single day i'd be getting yelled at (laughs) but you know what by the end of that, I ruled it. I I got it done every day, and it, you know it was like one of the best things I can say in my career. That thank God you, I had to push myself to do it, and it was just like this: don't get my, as yelled at today as you did yesterday. The next day, don't get as yelled at as much as you did yesterday. <laughs> yeah, every single day, and then you just start getting yelled at le- yelled less at less. less. less, <laughs> less. Yeah, yeah, okay. You know, French guys they they don't take it easy on you. <laughs> So after you graduated, then you hopped around even further. You went over overseas then. I did. Yep. Yeah. So you graduated from school in New York, and then you went over. Uh, I first went to Chicago, and I worked okay. at, uh, for Grant Atkins, who ended up being one of the best chefs in the world and still is today. But uh, he, nobody knew who he was. And my friends had been, before I went to culinary school, he's like, you want to come? This guy's like kind of incredible. And I was like, he is? So I'd come in, like, when I was on break or whatever, I'd come from New York. I'd go to Chicago with him, like, one day, like when I was on a break, another day when I was on a break and I work a day for free. Mm-hmm. And I was like, there's something with this guy. He's like, he's going to be big one day, even though nobody at that time, he came from the French laundry. Nobody knew who he was. And I'm not kidding. I started working there and we got this. He was super nervous that day. And he's like, well, we got to, this has got to go perfect. Okay. Talk to everyone in the kitchen. And here, this was Alinea, who, what is now the best restaurant in the United States. And this guy came there to be like, you know, he helped fund the restaurant, but it was like cool to watch the whole thing unfold. And now he's proud, you know, he's on every, you know, every name in the, in the culinary world and yeah. around. Oh, cool. That experience must have been fantastic, huh? It was pretty cool. But you just know when somebody's got it, you should see mm-hmm. the, the genius in them, you know? So you spent about 10 years hopping around mm-hmm. and you came back to Kenosha in 2012. What brought you back to Kenosha? Uh, my family was not doing well. So my mom had a, brain aneurysm when I was a junior, uh, I'm sorry, a senior in college. And so I found her on the floor. So called the ambulance, rushed to uh, the hospital. And, uh, you know, at that point, there was not really a neurologist. They found it was neurology. She was kind of like dead the whole, on the whole ride to the hospital. She Mm -hmm. wasn't breathing or anything. And they got her going again when we got to the hospital, but she had suffered a brain aneurysm. And from that, you have strokes. And I thought, my dad wasn't doing that great. You know, he had some blood clots in his legs. And I said, I got I to gotta go home and yeah, yeah. help out with the family business. And, you know, uh-huh. I knew that my time left with my, f- my, my, f- my f- time with my mom, I knew was fleeting at that, at yeah. that moment. It was not going to last forever. That's important. Yeah. So it's a good reason. <laughs> Thanks. So you come at Kenosha for the family thing, but then you, what was your first thoughts of returning? I'm sure you came back for holidays here and there, but this is your back here to stay now. What was your first feelings when you got to Kenosha, but the, around the city it's, itself? I, you know, I kind of feel like I had a little bit of a, 
an elitist attitude, in and in not in a good way, in a bad way. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, this isn't how you do. This isn't how you do stuff. This isn't how you do stuff. And I was like, who cares? Mm-hmm. Like, this is how you do stuff here. Let's just do stuff here like this, you know. And I, I think experience. Right, we all learn from experience, yeah. right? Yeah, for sure. It's like just calm down and let's like let's ride this wave and see how it works out and let's just make this place better than what it was before we got here, you know. But I gotta be honest, I'm kind of a control freak in those situations, and I'm, I, I just I'm I I can be up like I want things to be perfect, and that's not that's not that's not realistic. Yeah, yeah. So because you came back and you kind of took over the restaurant then. Um, I did a little pretty, bit. Pretty quickly, I, w- I was right? working it with my dad. Okay. Yeah. And that did not work out well. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever worked with someone that is just like you. And when I say I'm just like you, it doesn't work well. Okay. Um, you know, I see a lot of f- families work together. I work with a family right now. It's two sons and their dad, you know. Mm-hmm. It's new to Well, some can. Some can't, yeah. And that works out really well. I think mm-hmm. they have a great working relationship. Miss me and my dad were... I think too similar to work together mm-hmm. and neither of us were willing to bend, but that happens, you yeah. know, and he that, wasn't willing to step away and just let you take it. No. Mm. And, and I don't think that I was actually ready either. Okay. Mm-hmm. By the way, I had some of the best scallops I've ever had in my entire life at Ray Radigan's. Well, thank you. Yes. Yes. So is that what kind of contributed to the, the, the eventual closing of the restaurant? Um, yeah, I, I, I stepped away, and I think he just couldn't do it on his own anymore. Oh, you stepped away before they closed? Mm-hmm. And then also, you know, you have this, the yeah. restaurant business has changed so much. And, you know, you we're looking at, look at look at what's happened since COVID. Now the employee, is ha, is they're in the driver's seat. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. They can make more money doing less stuff yeah. than ever before in the history probably of the United States. And and that's great great. But for, you know, and 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 I feel like that was not, you know, we got to look at how the restaurant business changes like fashion. Mm-hmm. Right? You got to be you got to change with it. You you, you got to change, you got to change, you got to curtail, you got to do this. Whatever you got to do to to pivot and make it different, you got to do that. Mm-hmm. And I don't think we did that fast enough. Yeah, like when a server or bartender is making more money than the owner, there's there's something wrong. Right. I mean, well, pr- and props to that server I've been, or bartender. Right. Like, Jesus. I've been saying this since they started this $15 an hour thing, is that that's not going to help the little people at all in the end. No. All it's going to happen no. is going to raise prices and everything yep. else. The big guy is not going to take part of their money and give it to the little guy. Right. Oh, you want more money? Okay, here. I'm going to take some of my money, my profits, and give it to you. No, what they're going to do is like, I want my profits. I'm raising the price on everything. Yep, and right. That's why we have all the raising gas prices, raising yep. costs for everything is all kind of attributed to that, I think. Well, of course, the pandemic helped a little bit, yep, too. Or, right. But, or you get I think those, that was already kind of going those, that way before right. the pandemic. Automatic menus or you get the automatic tappers now. Right. You know, right. It, it, it's, a, it's a crazy change. I feel like happens. we're really trying to, to phase out having to pay people for work, which is yep. obviously you got to survive somehow, right? right? We all, got, we all want to survive. I, mean, yeah. I get it. I hate people, but <laughs> give me a break here. <laughs> That's just your hurt talking. Right. <laughs> so the restaurant closed in uh, 2015. Mm-hmm. Um, what were you doing then? Uh, I was working you said at a restaurant. away. So. Yeah, I was working at a restaurant in Twin Lakes, which was not super fun for me. But I got a call from Paul Capegna at Sazzy B who owns uh, Grease and Honey now, mm-hmm. uh, which is, you know, then they had that. Then they were opening the Buzz. Then they opened the Apis, or the Garage. The garage. Then the, and then Apis. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he kind of said, you can do whatever you want. I never had that opportunity. Wow, for that someone that said, nice. Yeah, someone that said, you can do whatever you want. Hmm. Wow, really? I can do whatever I want? And he <laughs> allowed me to do that. I was never told no. Yeah. And, like, that was very cool and freeing. And I think that that really helped build my career and my confidence as a chef too because when you're never told no you're like okay let's let's try yeah, this out i'm doing a good thing here <laughs> people trust what i'm doing let's yeah go with it. and you're the two you're like oh that last thing that i couldn't decide on what to do like sh- shrimp and grits is like one of my signature things that was like a i can't think of anything else on this menu i'm just gonna put this on mm-hmm. and we sold more of those than i think anything else wow. in the whole world <laughs> <laughs> it's weird so okay. you had a great time at sazzy bees you worked here for about three years yes I got to go back. I got to ask this a little bit. So the restaurant closes again. We got to go back to that. Mm-hmm. Did you have any urge to 
take it over? Cause you, because I did, but I just felt like I wasn't, I didn't have like the financial uh, the business backing. part of it. You were kind of lacking ha- maybe personally? I didn't have the, f- the, the financial backing behind okay. it. And so it was like, that to me was very scary hmm. without having some partners or something like that where what am I going to fall back on yeah. now? This is now this is going to fall on, mm-hmm. on, on me or, you know, God forbid my dad. Mm-hmm. And I just didn't feel right about that before it was, my name was never on anything, you know, and I think it's a whole nother thing. I didn't think I was ready for that. Well, you've mastered the kitchen work, maybe not the paperwork. You right. know? That, right. that might be even right. uh, uh, two different worlds. Yeah, Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that could be an obstacle that to deal with. So, and I just didn't think I was confident enough then. Okay. You know, maybe we all get something from experience, right? Yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Soon Mary Radigan's will be open, right? Oh, oh hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> I think that place, I mean, it had a great history and a great mm-hmm. run, but I think like in today's day, it's too far off the beaten path. People exactly. People don't want yeah. to go take a drive to go. Exactly. They don't, they don't want to do it. I know? think that's why downtown Kenosha is so successful. Yeah. Because yeah. people can get off their boat. They can go to one restaurant. They can go someplace else for a drink. They could go yep. to another place for dessert yeah I, I that that is like one of the best things i think that's happened for the city mm-hmm. as a whole and now it's a destination place where people from gurney or waukegan or racine you know yeah. they think that that's cool and it is cool I, yeah. I i feel like we're we're way more progressive than we were 20 years ago yeah, for sure for sure yeah like you can park somewhere get something to eat here get an app here mm-hmm. get a drink here walk down here before you know it you're eating at almost every place right All right, well, we got to take a break. We're kind of falling behind here, and we'll be right back in just a moment from these words from our sponsors. Aaron Hunzinger of AH Did It is a local industrial artist who specializes in lighting creations, custom furniture, and much more. Each piece he creates is a -a one-of-a-kind, guaranteed to never be duplicated, and is handcrafted with extensive care and imagination. No project is too big or small. For more, find Aaron on social media under AH Did It. That's all one word. Every Friday, get on down to Union Park Tavern, 4528th Avenue, for their famous Friday Fish Fry, voted best in Kenosha for over the last decade. But that's not all, Donnie. Union Park Tavern serves up great food every day, including their 9 a.m. weekend brunches. They also offer plenty of entertainment, live music, trivia night, karaoke night, and more. Be sure to check out that fabulous beer garden. That's Union Park Tavern, 4520 8th Avenue. And we're back from that break. And what a break that was. That's right. We're with Mary Radigan of Tenuta's Deli. They're located at 3203 52nd Street. Find them at tenutasdeli.com. And get on in there. And, I mean, if you don't know Tenuta's, you yeah, shouldn't be listening to the show. I mean, and I don't Mary know. has her own little corner in there, correct, where you, you, you make some appetizers, some correct. dishes, some correct. salads cool, and cool. stuff. She also does catering and all that good stuff. So get a hold of Mary at Tanuna's, please, please. But where were we when we left? Uh, uh, we were talking to Mary. She was at Sazzy B's. You loved it there. You had free reign. Mm-hmm. And your confidence is through the roof where you're at Sazzy B's. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you decided, you said, hey, I, I might want to try something else here. This is fun and all, but what made you decide to leave Sazzy B's? Um, I, I actually got a teaching job. Oh, oh! <laughs> at Park High School, so I left for a year and I did that, and that was uh, amazing. I loved it, but I really miss cooking. Oh, so you tried to get out of the cooking game for yeah, a little bit? Yeah, I was, uh, and I wanted, I was just teaching burnt out? culinary. Yes, I was getting to the point where I just couldn't, I just couldn't do it anymore. You know that, it, it, you know, seventy hour work weeks get. Yeah. Oh. But get old after a while. Mm-hmm. So. I feel like I'm burnt out doing the podcast once in a while. <laughs> but not this one. You rejuvenated me, Mary. A good answer. <laughs> I got to cut this out. Now. <laughs> <laughs> so you went to teaching, but then what brought you back into it? Into- um, so Chef David offered me a position, and I thought, okay. I oh, really- for people who don't know, who is Chef David? Chef David has a catering um, uh, a catering business, and he's very talented with his wife, Kathy. And so they offered me a position to be their chef, and I thought, oh, let's try this at least – um, I, I knew I still wanted to cook, but I didn't want the hours of, mm-hmm. let's say, you know, in the summertime, sometimes, yeah, I'd work 70 hour work weeks, but usually it's more like 50, uh, for the most part. And, you know, it was great. I, I have to actually say I really learned a lot and I, I feel blessed for that because they really taught me a lot about catering, which is completely different than running a restaurant kitchen. Wow. 
So did you enjoy doing the catering? Like you were like, wow, this is refreshing. I'm rejuvenated. Yes. It was refreshing. And plus not only that, but you're helping people celebrate stuff every day. Right. So that's kind of cool aspect of mm. it. You know what I mean? You're like, oh, your wedding. I don't know you, but congratulations. <laughs> people are people are having a good time. You know, that's the They're thing. They're usually yeah. having a good time. And yep. usually you don't have people that are real pains in the asses for the most part. You get some here and there. But. You don't really have to deal with the public as much as you did no. before. No, thank God. All right, so you're you're doing the catering, Chef David, and you got you got the catering bug. Tenuta's mm-hmm. calls. Well, mm-hmm. How does this happen? Because now you're at Tenuta's current day. Um. So, uh, gr- uh, I don't know if you guys know Greco and Sons, but they're a distributor, and Tim Santelli uh, owned it. Now it's owned by Cisco, but he uh, had contacted me because he said Chris Tenuta is looking since COVID. COVID's changed the, game, uh, yeah. the whole game of of restaurants oh, yeah. and everything a lot. Yeah. So people are eating at home more. So how can we get people to eat, eat our food at home? Yeah. So yeah. this is a big thing that Chris Tunito was looking for. And he's like, I just feel like the game has changed. And we got, pit, like we said before, pivot, change the game. And he said, what what can I do? And Tim said, well, I know Mary Radigan's looking for a job. Mm. And so um, Chris had texted me and I said, let's meet. And... Uh, I started working there and I thought, I don't know what I'm going to think about this. I like, I don't know. I, I freaking love it. I love working at Tunitas. I love the people I work with. I, I, I work with people that are a lot younger than me, but the driven know their jobs. Uh, Chris has got two sons that are starting to take it over. So Dan and Nick and, uh, 27 and 25 and they really, uh, they do a really nice job. We should get one of the old timers on the show and talk yeah, about Yeah, Can you hook us up with that? Yeah, probably. I mean, so like Chris is like, I don't know you from Adam, but I know my dad always liked you. And I always loved Ralph. I always, I mean, everybody in Kenosha loved Ralph. Yeah, and he Ralph, the one to have. Yeah. yeah, Ralph knew how to make money. And I, I and Ralph always had a good like, man, he he knew how to get people involved, right? <laughs> so Chris, we, we I start working there and the rest is history. But uh, like, I really love it because you will have like, a product that you're really proud of i don't think we and the rich history that they have yeah too. and i it's just like cool it's like oh you want saffron cool we got that oh you want hot soap prosada? cool we got that <laughs> oh you want the sardinian cheese with saffron like i'm not only that but i'm learning so much about italian cuisine that i never knew <laughs> before um you know i work with chinzia that's been working there for 44 years wow uh she's a very cool lady very she's taught me a lot of things you know things i didn't know before and i yeah, think that that's sure. really cool you know i got people calling me and i'm like <laughs> i'm this irish girl that's answering the phone and i'm like <laughs> you want what <laughs> but you know i i it's it's very cool and i would have never thought that i loved it as much as i do and like it's even so much so that now you know i got to go to mount carmel festival and i i help out with like one of the booths there, you know. Oh, cool, cool. So I'm I'm practicing my Italian. You know, <laughs> I started to, I started doing it on Babel last year, so <laughs> I hope I can survive a little bit. So I mean, people who know Tinnitus knows that you have a great deli there, great alcohol selection, all great delicious stuff there. But what else could you guys offer? Do you guys do any catering services, things like that? Um, we do, we definitely do some catering services. It's a little bit um, it can be pick and choose, okay. especially because if we did all the things that we wanted to do we we just couldn't okay. um Too so much stuff there's we we have a lot of offers to do things mm-hmm. and so we kind of can't do everything but you do like small parties and stuff like that right yes we do um but you know another thing you know we do a lot of charcuterie boards so okay. that's a new thing that we started doing and so you know we get we've we've gotten a lot of them mm-hmm. uh especially recently um, for oh, you know, so 100 or 200 people events, stuff like oh, that. Oh, well, that's that's a big one. Yeah, yeah, so you know, like you're covering a whole table. Um, it's so just Tenuta's is kind of evolving with you, there yes. with these new things. Absolutely, well. you know, we have evolved. Like Dan has evolved the company. He's the oldest of the two sons, and he sees a lot of things that are kind of like mm-hmm. in vogue now, and kind of things that we can start doing. And I think that that's cool. What Tenuta's is doing, if you're not living, you're dying, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you got to keep, you know, like we said, you got to keep changing and changing and changing. And that's what Ralph was really good about. And I think also, you know, Chris sees the value in that and he sees that that's important. And Dan's got a really good eye on it as a 27 year old. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that that's what's, it's, it's just cool to watch it. 
it's really been cool to watch it because we just keep getting busier and busier <laughs> and busier. You know, you, how can Tanudas get any more busier? But they are. <laughs> they are. And I said at Christmas time, I said this is insane. Oh, yeah. I was I was freaking out um, to Chinzia. She's like, it's gonna be fine. It's <laughs> fine. We're gonna holidays have been Tanudas at least five times <laughs> from yeah. Thanksgiving to Christmas. At least five times. I forgot something it's, or gotta go get. I'm gonna tell or... you, it's it's scary. <laughs> it's scary. I mean, it's cool, but it's scary. Yeah. You're yeah. like, okay. Okay, I'm going to be here for 12 hours and I'm going to get my ass beat every for most of it. But you, know? you love it. But it's part of that <laughs> exhilaration that you saw when you were Absolutely. a kid in the kitchen at your grandpa's Absolutely. restaurant. Absolutely. You know, and people are calling to change their orders. And I'm like, hey, you know, I don't know if you, you th- they think we got a computer that we're, I'm like, I got to go through 600 pieces of paper. So you got to get me in there. <laughs> we're still old school in that way a little bit. So you make your own pastas. I correct? do sometimes, yeah. Okay. Are, so they're cool with that? Doesn't, isn't tunas, do they have like strict rules with balling their own homemade, what they put their mouth, their label on? Or are um, they kind of cool with kind of things kind of evolving and changing? They, yeah, they're kind of they're food cool. wise, like recipe yeah, they, wise too. Yeah, th- absolutely. Really? Like, okay. Again, I kind of got the same thing that I had with Paul. Like, you, Chris has never bothered me about one thing I've ever made. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he's like, do your thing. He's never questioned me. He's never. He's he's been very open. You 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 do you, mm-hmm. and I always appreciate that. Except he comes and eats. Um, all my lavash. <laughs> <laughs> so you get any old ladies coming to go, you don't make it the same way. I don't know. I mean, they probably say that behind my back. I'm sure. <laughs> Usually they don't say it to you. Or are they saying it in Italian? I'm sure. <laughs> but what kind of stuff do you, you have? like a little section there in the mm-hmm. deli, deli container. What kind of stuff is in there? Um, usually some um, daily made pastas. Um, I'll put some desserts in there like panna cottas. Um, I'll, I'll do some different flavored cannolis. Like Ooh. we did like a chocolate covered strawberry for Valentine's Day or or like a shamrock shake flavored one for um it's really hard to walk Saint, past that dessert st yep. patrick's day or we i do a salted caramel one with a chocolate shell with chunked up amaretti cookies on the ends we do all different stuff um you know like uh it's just it's are you up by cool. the front Salads. by the by the cheeses and stuff are you yes up there? Oh, okay. right there. Oh, cool. and then we do um, now that it's the weather changed last week but now we're back to now we're back to soup season <laughs> and i made soup yesterday but we'll have soups in there we'll have some you know some salads because i feel like people still want something healthy to eat as well not everybody wants pasta yeah yeah um so we are they gonna open the grill again this summer absolutely mm-hmm. you know when absolutely. that's gonna open are you, are you gonna be part of that it's or? usually no no, no nope. because that's like uh it's a whole different thing. <laughs> You're not different sausages. Thing. I'm not grilling sausages now. Um, Out in the heat, in but front I'm, of a fire. Nah. But I like using that grill because, like, I'm like some, you know, chicken breast or some something mm. like cool in there. But um, it's it's fun. It's really fun, and I really enjoy my job there. I feel very lucky. That I, it was something that I never thought I'd be doing, but I feel very lucky. It's kind of cool that this, uh, you're from an iconic Kenosha family and you're at an iconic Kenosha restaurant, mm-hmm. like, or deli, a different one, you know, it's mm-hmm. kind of like combining forces, you know, like Avengers style or something. <laughs> <laughs> you're not the only one that said that. Really? Really? No. Oh, damn it. Oh. <laughs> Just that's that's cool. how they hooked her to get the job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. So. Well, right. Chef Mary Radigan, yeah. if you, uh, Stopping at Tenuta's, 3203 52nd Street. Um, you even get some catering by her. Get some uh, taken-home heat specials. Heat them up in your own oven. Uh, you can uh, email at info at tenutasdeli.com or give them a call at 262-657-9001. Do they want people to call, though? You don't, you don't, well, it's old you don't school. Want people to call. Do you know call. how many people call us? Really? really? <laughs> Do you know I answer the phone a lot? Ah, <laughs> that's see? That's in my domain. Right. They're going to be, hey, we heard you on the K-Top Next <laughs> podcast. I mean, I get a lot of phone calls. All right, okay. <laughs> so, well, I guess you're playing a big party or something. Yeah, or... I mean, I, I have to say, Mary, I love that video of you on St. Patrick's Day that Tenuta's did. Oh, thanks. With the, with the dancing leprechauns. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> All right, and we got to take our second break, and we'll be right back after these words. Does your business need a little extra attention? Do you want to grow your impact and your bottom line? Do you want to be heard? Well, let out a roar and contact Gary Schneeberger of Roar. The Roar team has over 30 years of experience creating effective and strong content that will help you reach your goals with boldness, engagement, and inspiration. Want to learn more? Visit weroar.la. Hey, Jason, you thirsty? Hell yeah. Well, get on down to Lucci's Grandview, 6929 39th Avenue, and grab yourself a cold drink and some great conversation. This family-owned bar will serve you up some great memories. Follow them on Facebook for their great upcoming specials and events. That's Lucci's Grandview, 6929 39th Avenue. 
Hey, Jason, do you want even more of K-Town Connect? Oh, my gosh, I sure do. Well, sign on to become a Patreon subscriber by clicking the link at ktownconnects.com. Subscriptions start as low as $2 a month. Whoa, what do I get for that? All kinds of great stuff, like our exclusive It Is What It Is series, where we talk about just about anything, and you get each week's episode early, ad-free, and get this, Jason, what? completely unedited. Whoa. So you get all the juicy stuff, just like this. Favorite junk food? Uh, favorite junk food? I would eat a hot Italian beef every single day if I could. Oh. Yeah. Dunked, super, super wet, so it's falling apart. That's mm. what I love. Mm. Did you just say super wet? That's mm. what I love? <laughs> Can that be a sound bite? <laughs> 10 minutes and 14 seconds. <laughs> Become a Patreon supporter today by finding the quick link at ktownconnects.com. And we're back from that break. And what a break it was. It was. <laughs> and what time is it, Jason? It's time for Kenosha Connects. That's brought to you by Hide and Cheese. Hey, Donnie, what's that delicious smell? Well, it must be Hide and Cheese. The one thing we all need in Wisconsin is more cheese options. Ain't that the truth? And at Hide and Cheese, they have taken the art of grilled cheese to amazing and delectable levels. Donnie, did you know that Hide and Cheese can be found all over the Kenosha area? Really? Including Carthage College, wow. Milliger's Market and Racine, mm. and most of the summer <laughs> festivals around town? Wow. Mary, be sure to like them on Facebook and then find out where to pick up some of their fantastic sandwiches and soups. I'm a fan of Tim's food. Yep. That's Hide and Cheese. Tim and Amber do great work there. So all it's right, time Mary. for Kenosha Connects with you Mary ready? You ready for I, this? I think so. Not all really. Right. <laughs> These are I'm not tough ready, ones. But okay. All right. What all was right. the last great meal you had in Kenosha? That you didn't make yourself. Yeah. Uh, the last great meal I had in Kenosha was, oh, uh, I, I always like going to Why Not. I always have, I like the steak there. I always have a good time there. Chef um, Brian's amazing. Yes. Uh, he, he does a really good job. I'd say that's what it is. Nice. Where in Kenosha would you recommend someone go for their first date? Ooh. Um, Tenudos? No. <laughs> I, you know what? I feel like there's some good little spots. Like, I think it, like Union Park Tavern would be a good one for a first date. I don't think, I don't like first dates that are first dates. Mm, you know yeah. what I mean? Mm. They, they, they should be little holes in the wall more. Yeah. Like, if you like to drink, maybe Scotty's. You know, ah. like, if you don't, like... There's just some good little, like if you can get in a Renzo's, but they're not, oh, but they're not supposed to. I know, be Renzo's, but not Renzo's, to be. Renzo's is weird, man. Like just open your dining room already. Yeah. You know? Like I think that's a cool spot for a first date. Yeah, I agree with you. Renzo's is not supposed to be open. What's going on? Now? No, they're, they're just open for pickup. Oh, okay. you, you can't go inside anymore. No. I don't know what the story. You tell me off the air. Well, Luigi's can. was like that for a yeah, while. They started true. with COVID. It took them a long time to yeah. open their dining room back up again. So. Maybe that's what they're doing. Maybe they don't have the help. Maybe, you yeah, know. Well, help is a big thing. Right yeah, now. they can't get someone to wait table. So, you know, screw it. We're close up. All right. What is your favorite Kenosha event? Kenosha favorite event. Um, I would say, ooh, I would probably say, what's up? What's the festival that's down by the. Taste of Wisconsin. Taste of Wisconsin. Yes. It's back one. this year, too. How'd you know what she was talking about? Because oh, she's a chef. <laughs> uh, taste, taste of Wisconsin is fun, but I really like the bands, too. I just think it's fun. Like, anything outside, really. Taste though. is great. It's, that's, I'm I, so glad it's coming back after we, its zero-year absence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're really blessed with a lot of great events. We have a lot of great area. events. But I like other church festivals, too. I think those are cool. Yeah. Mount Carmel, especially. Thank you, Egg Rolls. <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah Squeeties. favorite local place to see a band uh union park tavern i'd say oh, yeah right. uh what's your favorite pizza place in kenosha mm. you don't say the best it's your favorite my favorite uh Inficinos. nice choice not luigi's it's <laughs> luigi's <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time you rode the streetcar mary I've never done it. Oh, <laughs> you better you better get on there this summer. I've never done it. Never, not even once. Not even once. Wow, you gotta do it once. It's like when you live in New York, you never go to that. You never, you never do any of the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what now closed Kenosha business do you wish you could bring back? Uh, Bartley House. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot about that one for a minute. Hmm. Shouldn't say Ray Radians. Okay, that's that's like yeah yeah okay too close to home yeah okay 
You can't pick all your favorites. Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> Way to make her feel uncomfortable. Oh, well, that's what I do. <laughs> that's my effect on women. <laughs> I'm here for my girlfriend every day. <laughs> When's the last time you put your feet in Lake Michigan? Um, at probably last summer. Okay. Probably or for sure? For sure. Okay, good. What is one? How, how deep did you go? Oh, yeah. Uh, like <laughs> knee, it was cold. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is what is one thing you wish you could change about Kenosha? Uh, I wish we were a, sometimes a little bit more open minded. I agree about everything yeah. <laughs> yeah. restaurants, uh, people, everything. In which Kenosha bar do you think you spent the most money at? That would be, um, either probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I do know the answer. It's, it would be Wooden Nickel. Oh, next to Ray nickel. Radigan's. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Okay. Wow. I remember when the Smoky Man happened in Illinois first. Yes. They were packed, packed down there. Packed. That was the place for all the Illinois people to go. And they were just making the money oh, nice. because you could smoke up here. So mm-hmm. all the smokers from Illinois would come up here. People come from like sh- as far away as like Lincolnshire and stuff. I'm like, are you wow. serious? <laughs> just to smoke in the bar? <laughs> yeah, oh, it's like it's in the bar wow. and smoke. Yeah. Wow. And that was the first one you see when you come yeah, right. down Sharon Road. So. Oh, man. <laughs> it's true. All right. Last one. You ready for this one, Mary? Yeah. Tough one. Okay. Big Star or The Spot? Oh, I'm going to get murdered for this one, too, but The Spot. Oh, okay. All right. Spot's good. Spot. Yeah, spot, spot's right. better. I think spot is better. I know. I, I, Big Star is own. good. I mean, they're both good. Yeah. Come on. I mean, you're not saying one's bad and one's good. Just it's just a better. choice. It's just what you choose. Oh, Spot's better. Yeah. <laughs> well, that it's was... Really. That Thank was you for our, the encouragement. Yeah. <laughs> that was our Kenosha Connects. Brought Last you time I said I told the Big Star was up better, but... Yes, thank you, Hide and Cheese. Thank you, Hide and Cheese, Thanks, for that and great cheese. sponsor. <laughs> and what time is it now, Donnie? <laughs> ding, ding, ding. It's trivia time. And trivia is brought to you by the Lettering Machine. They are located at 725 50th Street. They can customize almost anything. Gifts, uniforms, school apparel, office attire, accessories. You name it, they got it. Also, check out their online novelty shop at thelearnermachine.com. They have some awesome ready-made designs just for you. So check out thelearnermachine.com. Let's get that trivia going, Jason. Oh, yeah. It's trivia time. Thank you so much for the letter machine. And it's time for a trivia where we put our guest against Donnie. Are you ready to go down, Mary? I think so. All right. And we're... Now, Mary, you're a chef, so... You've done these wine and food pairings in the past, correct? Correct. Okay, good. <laughs> Am I going to do it? Okay. <laughs> because today we're talking about wine and food pairings. They're trivia. Okay. Donnie's an expert as well because he's drank wine before. I have. So, and you've eaten food? I have. Eaten. I said eaten. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I did. Just to let y'all know, it's I'm really, aware. It's really, really past tense. I'm aware. Hey, it's the uh, <laughs> public craft brewery. Thank and, you, public. Mm. So for trivia today, we're doing uh, food and wine tasting. Or, okay. Yeah. Donnie, I'm going to ask you the first question here. All right. This is best of three. Donnie, when cooking a highly flavored meat like beef, bourgeon, duck, or cassoulet, mm-hmm. you want to pair with a wine of blank. Uh, stronger intensity, less intensity, or equal intensity? Equal. You're right, Donnie. What can I say? Yay! <laughs> Thank you, Angie, for the encouragement. Yes. <laughs> all right, Mary. This is how it works. Okay. I totally guessed at that, by the way. <laughs> when it comes to salty foods like olives, potato chips, soy sauce, and Parmesan, what are the best wines to pair with these foods? A, high tannin red wines. B, highly acidic red or white wines. Or C, full-bodied red or white wines. Acidic. That is correct. Damn it. Highly acidic red or white wines. Tie it up. me up, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> hope you guys are playing along at home and hope you're doing well. Donnie? I'm ready. <laughs> Spicy foods like buffalo wings, kimchi, and Thai chili sauce mm-hmm, mm-hmm. can be tricky when trying to pick the perfect wine pairing. Mm-hmm. When it comes to spice, the best wines should be... A, lighter in alcohol, B, higher in alcohol, or C, fortified wines with high alcohol and some sweetness. I want to see, say, higher in alcohol so it burns off. Oh, that's a good good try, but no. Ah! 
Uh, a, lighter in alcohol with some degree of sweetness. Did Mary? that make any sense, my answer? <laughs> <laughs> Does this make any sense to you, Mary, or are you just kind of guessing along with us? <laughs> no, I... <laughs> I know of a fair amount. Okay, good, 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 because we don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I took this from my mind, so. Fair enough. And the ones I guessed and got right, I gave to you. And the ones I got wrong, I gave to Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Here we go. Number two. For our friends with a sweet tooth, for cookies, pastries, and chocolates, the best wine to eat with treats are A, high tannin red wines, B, dry wines with a medium body, or C, Wines with a degree of sweetness or dessert wines? There's two right answers there. <laughs> it's C. Yes, it's C. Hey, there you go. The dessert wines are for the desserts. That makes sense, I guess, right? All right, Donnie, you got to get this one to, to, to oh, win it. Shit. No, to or win to, it. To, to stay in. To stay in. Yeah, to stay in the game. All right. The yeah. answer is B. <laughs> that is incorrect. <laughs> It is a C. Damn it. Donnie, you're the loser. We got to wrap this up soon anyway. So, Donnie, what does she win? Congratulations. <laughs> you win a K Talkin' X t shirt courtesy of the Lead Machine. It is right over there. I can't wait to see you wear it, Mary. Cool. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, thank you, Lettering Machine, for the t shirt. Yes. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much. Mary, what a great episode. Thank you for coming on the show. We learned so much about you. And your rich history here in Kenosha. We appreciate you coming in. Thanks for having me. That's Mary Raggin. She's over there making uh, catering, pastas, salads, desserts, appetizers, and more specialty items at Tanuta's Deli, 3203 52nd Street, com. All right, we're going to take this time to thank our sponsors. Well, before we get to that, let's thank our Patreon subscriber of the week, Lynn Johnson hey, from Lemon Street. Hey, thank, thank you so thank much you. for your support. We appreciate that. If you want to become a Patreon supporter, visit our website at ktownconnects.com. And don't forget, you can find this episode and others of the K Town Connects podcast on Spectrum Channel 14 and the Kenosha Community Media Streaming Channel on the Roku Box. The Roku. Every Wednesday, 11 a.m. and Saturday at 5 p.m. Big thanks to Dropping Daisies for that great yep, theme song. Yep. <laughs> Don't forget to follow the K-Town Connects podcast on all the social media outlets, including Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Drop us a review on Facebook or on your favorite podcast provider and spread the word about the hottest podcast in town. And what podcast is that? The, the K-Town, K-Town Connects, Connects podcast. podcast. All Mary right, Lister. and uh, thanks to all of our great sponsors, Union Park Tavern, Lucci's Grandview, A.H. Did It, Roar, Frank's Diner, Shannon Franklin, Remax Realtor, Wink Beauty Boutique, Hide and Cheese, Public Craft Brewing Company, and Luigi's Pizza Kitchen. Thank you all so much, and Mary, once again, thank you so much. We appreciate you coming in. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah. What a fun night. And uh, Jason, I, all, 102 episodes in, what are we trying to do with this show? I believe we're trying to connect Kenosha. Kenosha, Kenosha, that great big